Welcome to Counter-Strike Mapping Academy. I'm your host, Sammy Chimonahihi Aliyubi. This is the Overlay Guide, which has had some updates in Counter-Strike 2 from other Source 2 titles. In this tutorial, we will explore all the possible commands to take advantage of overlay operations. To access the available overlays, open up your Asset Browser. At the top, locate the Overlays tab and click on it to browse the available overlay materials. You can further refine your list using the search bar. To move an overlay into the map, simply drag and drop it into the viewport. The overlay by default is represented by this entity icon. The boundaries shown by the bounding box show where the projection will be cast. By default, the overlay will cast onto props and meshes. In the Hammer Editor, the GPU path trace mode will not show the overlays. When everything's being compiled, these overlays will basically be treated as a mesh. Translate the overlay entity by pressing T and using the handles to move it where you want the overlay to be projected. Rotate the overlay entity by pressing R and using the handles to rotate the projection. You can resize the overlay a few different ways. In select mode, drag the handles and make sure you have your texture lock on. You can also use the scale tool to resize projection uniformly. The overlay you dragged into your map will have its material displayed here. You can change the material by changing the material listed here manually. You can tint the overlay by selecting the color. The materials that are tintable will have better results. Adjust the alpha to change the transparency of the entire overlay. Render order specifies what order the projections will be cast on each other if you have multiple overlays. Counter-Strike 2 allows users to specify the quality of rendering they want in their video settings. Disable in low quality mode will disable rendering the specific overlay if the user has low quality mode enabled. Lighting Origin is used to specify which cube map this overlay should be using. This can be useful if you have a curved interior and exterior part of your map where you want certain faces on one side and certain faces on another. Projection distance is measured in hammer units and shows how far the projection will be cast. This is visualized by the bounding box. Material adjustment parameters will be discussed in another video. Project on back facings will have the overlay projected onto the back side of materials if this is checked. Maximum projection angle specifies a maximum angle difference between the overlay and triangles the overlay will project onto. This can be set between 0 and 180 degrees, where 0 means the overlay will only project onto surfaces facing the exact same direction as the overlay, and 180 will allow the overlay to project onto surfaces facing completely the opposite direction. All will have the overlay project onto all faces within its boundary. This is both meshes and models. World Geometry will project the overlay only onto hammer meshes. This will ignore models. Only Models will allow only models to project the overlay. This option ignores hammer meshes. Target Objects will allow you to specify which objects you want the overlay to be projected on. If this is selected, you will have to specify it in the projection targets. Projection targets is used when projection mode is set to it. Use the picker tool to click on any object directly to select which targets to use. You can hold down shift to select multiple targets. 
With overlays coming in sheets, you can clip which part of the sheet you want to use with the clipping tool. Select an overlay entity, and then press Shift X to enter the clipping tool. Use this tool, as explained in the previous videos, to clip out dimensions of what you want to keep. When you have finished your clipping operation, the overlay will be converted into a mesh. This can be manipulated as its own individual mesh. You can stack this directly on top of other meshes without a fear of any Z fighting. Since this overlay is converted into a mesh after clipping, you can edit the UV of the materials as you would with any other face. The fast texture tool can be very powerful here. Because the overlay is now being used as a mesh, you may want to reproject it as an overlay after you clip out the parts that you want. This can be extremely useful if you want to enlarge the projection and scale it up or down. Right click on the mesh and under selected meshes select convert to overlay. If you want to have much more control over your overlays, take advantage of the overlay mesh editing mode that has been updated for Counter-Strike 2. Click on the overlay shapes icon, or press Shift N to enter mesh editing. Your overlay projections will now be represented by a mesh that can be modified to change what is being projected. This is not the same as converting an overlay to a mesh after clipping, as this is still a projection from a static overlay. With overlay shapes, manipulate the edges, faces, and vertices as shown in the previous videos to get all the specific shapes that you want for your overlay projection. Once you have finished manipulating the mesh, treat the UV manipulations as shown in the previous videos to get the specific UV that you want. Using the Fast Texture tool, in coordination with overlay shapes, is an extremely powerful combination. While in Overlay Shapes mode, press Shift-V to enter Vertex Painting. New in Counter-Strike 2 is the ability to paint directly onto overlays in Color and Alpha mode. Here we will go over the basics, since this was covered in a previous episode. Paint Color mode allows you to select a color and paint directly onto an overlay mesh. Paint Alpha mode allows you to blend in your set alpha to the overlay mesh. This can let you fade and transition seamlessly. For a deep dive into the topic of vertex painting so you can master this in overlay mode, check out CS2 Mapping Academy number 7 on Vertex Painting. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on overlays. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord for more help, to participate in all our community events, and to play our games and maps. Shout out to Zarth Ben for all the transitions and titles. Check him out in the description below.